Hi witches! So today I am going to be showing you how I am setting up my full snow moon altar. The full snow moon is happening on Wednesday, February 16th, 2022. And if you would like to see a video about that, I made one on Monday, so you can totally go check that out. Right now, I am just clearing off all of the old items I am no longer using. A lot of this is left over from Imbolc, a lot of this is left over from other workings that I was doing, so no worries, just tidying it all off. No worries about having a messier altar, it just means that you're doing the work that you need to. Next, I am cleansing my altar space and I am going to trace out above my altar surface a protective pentacle um, and then I am going to let the frankincense incense kind of waft throughout my space to further smoke cleanse my sacred space. Next, I'm adding my jar for moon water. I got this at Target for like $5, so it's not as fancy as it looks. Um, a nice little column that I like to use for altar decor and a small jar that I will be using to make a spell jar during my Patreon um, patron ritual. Then some containers for herbs and crystals if you so choose. Next, I am adding my candles, and these are actually the candles that I used during Imbolc. I like to use the same candles or some of the same materials from previous altars to carry forth the energy that we raised during that holiday or during that working and carrying it forward into the working at hand. Next, I am adding tea lights uh, for all of the moonlight manifestations that I do for my patrons on a monthly basis. Next, I am going to be adding some powdered eggshells as well as some sea salt to the center of my altar in order to create a protective circle. Next, I am adding in a dish that will house some bones that I am adding into my practice, into my collection. I am processing them and dressing them for burial as asked by Anubis. This will then be an offering to him. I'm cleansing this bowl as well with some selenite and leaving that piece in there. Um, I will take it out when I fill it with water. Next, I'm going to add some more crystals, some amethyst, um, as well as some obsidian for protection. So I'm adding those amethyst pieces first. I got these actually from my mom. Um, so these are very nice amethyst specimens for sure. Um, and then just some obsidian. And I try to make my altars balanced. This one I was going for kind of the as above, so below, but I ended up changing it a little bit later because I didn't quite like it. Um, just adding some more crystals, some rose quartz, some golden healing quartz, um, some citrine, and some selenite.
and there we are fixing things. <laughs> I just, I, it was not fitting right with my brain. I like to intuitively build altars and I truly believe that you can change an altar design about halfway through and it'll still be beautiful and wonderful. These are the bones I am adding into my practice. As you can see, I have them wrapped up in one of my sacred veils as a shroud. Um, so I will be continuing to clean these, decreasing them and putting them in some hydrogen peroxide to really whiten them and make them beautiful and restore them to the beauty that they once held in life. Adding my pendulum for some moonlight divination. And of course, my beautiful tarot cards. And finally, another little piece of amethyst. And that just about completes the entire altar. Here are some of my other altars. I dusted these off. These are for my deities, Hecate, the Morrigan. I have a small corner of this window still set up for Bast, as well as charging some things that I'm adding to my Etsy shop soon. <laughs> Actually, I just thought it looked really pretty in the sunlight. Uh, my altar for Hearn, my altar for Anubis, and then I have a little small offering to Apollo there. And here is the final, excuse my finger, the final altar for the videos. 